Hello to prospective students and their family members. This is a presentation uh, from the psychology program. I'm Dr. Brandi Klein. I'm one of the faculty in our program. I'm going to tell you a little bit about our psychology major and our psychology minors. We have several options for the minors throughout this presentation here. Welcome. So in our psychology program, we offer both a Bachelor of Arts and a Bachelor of Science in addition to our minors. The Bachelor of Arts has a focus on liberal arts courses and the Bachelor of Science has a focus on science and math courses. The main difference between them is that the Bachelor of Science degree requires you to take a couple extra science courses and an extra math course. Students usually for their science courses will take biology one and biology two or chemistry one or chemistry two, or there's an anthropology course you can take as well. But that's the main difference between them is that the Bachelor of Science requires a few extra courses. Parents at open house presentations sometimes ask me if there's a benefit to one over the other. I would say with the Bachelor of Science, that's better if you're a um, student or you, if you're the one listening to this as the student. Uh, the Bachelor of Science is better if you plan on um, focusing on neuroscience or health psychology or going into a health related field. If you might want to go to medical school to get an MD to be a psychiatrist. Uh, anything like that, uh, a Bachelor of Science might be better. But if you want to be a counselor or a social worker or go into human resources, industrial organizational psychology, sports psychology, social psychology, developmental psychology, if you want to work in the criminal justice system as a child advocate, if you want to get into applied behavior analysis, any of those things, and that's not an exhaustive list, but the Bachelor of Arts is perfectly fine for those things and you won't be at a disadvantage. Uh, we have five faculty members in our psychology department and I have separate slides for each of those um, uh, individuals later on. We are one of the five largest majors on campus. We like having a lot of psychology students. It's great to have so many people around who have a genu genuine interest in the field. We involve a lot of our students in our research groups outside of the classroom, as well as, of course, teaching them in the classroom. Our mission is to have our students prepared for both graduate study and immediate employment after graduation. So whether you want to attend grad school or you want to go into the workforce right away, we should have you prepared for either of those options. Uh, these are just some of our faculty here. We had a end of the semester lunch last semester and took a picture. Um, what I wanted to note is that we have a wide breadth of different courses that we offer. Each faculty member has a different area of specialization. So we can offer a lot of courses in a wide variety of different areas and students can tailor their elective courses to whatever they might want to do for their future careers. We have some required courses. All of our students are required to take intro to psych, statistics, research methods, two upper level labs. And then we have a few requirements. They need to take a social science, social psychology related course. They need to take a developmental course, you know, some different things like that, but they have some options in those areas. And then they have additional electives, like I said, where they can tailor to their preferences. As far as class sizes go, our course sizes are very small. We have a really good faculty to student ratio. Uh, the biggest our courses ever get is an intro to psych and those are capped at 28 students. So no courses ever more than 28 students. Our upper level courses are capped at smaller levels and our laboratory courses, for example, we have the lecture portion of the course which is capped at 24 students, but for the laboratory portion of the course, we split those into two different lab groups and they're capped at 12 people per course. So you get a lot of one-on-one -on -one attention from your faculty member in those particular courses. Student that's a psychology major will get an assigned psychology advisor and they're required to meet with this advisor at least once a semester to go over classes, uh, registration stuff for the following semester to make sure they're on track with their degree and taking the appropriate courses and to get advice for which courses they can take depending on what they wanna do with their future careers. But a lot of our advisees pop into our offices all the time uh, and we end up seeing them a lot more than once per semester. We offer advice on, you know, graduate school, career options, internships, different things like that. So we see our advisees quite a bit. And also like, of course, since we are the psych department, not uh, to make sure everyone's doing 
well on the mental side. We check in on everyone's mental health. Uh, for some of our students, might be the first time living away from home. You know, different things. Uh, this is an image of one of our students presenting at our academic showcase, and this is just an image I took of Pearly Pond on campus that I thought was pretty. <laughs> okay, uh, but our students uh, develop a lot of vital skills for employment uh, and for graduate school. We, uh, our school actually did a survey of employers and they asked what they want in graduates of Franklin Pierce. Uh, there have also been surveys directly in the field of psychology, so they asked psychology employers what kind of skills are you looking for in psychology students? And these are basically what those survey results found. They want graduates that are able to speak and communicate clearly, that have critical thinking, they're able to critically evaluate research, they have strong writing skills, a lot of stuff in psychology and other health professions involves, of course, a lot of paperwork, as any of you who are working in these fields will know. Uh, data analysis and the big things a lot of times are interpersonal skills and teamwork. So we get our students involved uh, in a lot of um, projects that involve working with teams, collaboration, working with faculty in groups. Uh, we all have a group of research assistants that work with us on different projects. So our students get a wide variety of exposure to these different skills throughout their courses. Some courses are writing focused, uh, some are more research focused, you know, and we have different um, emphases in different courses. As far as graduate school preparation goes, one of the best things you can do as a student to prepare for graduate school is to get involved in research. Our students in psychology major are required to take two upper level lab courses. So these are our four upper level lab courses that we offer. Students are required to take two of them. They're evolutionary psychology, neuroscience, psychology of learning, and cognitive psychology. These are all laboratory courses. So we have a two hour lab every week in addition to our Monday, Wednesday, Friday, or Tuesday, Thursday lecture time. And we focus on human subjects research in those courses. So we focus on the ethics involved in doing tests on human subjects. We focus on the procedures you need to follow. There are a lot of government guidelines that need to be followed when you're doing research with humans. And we make sure that students have a good handle on how to design strong studies, analyze data, interpret results correctly, and write entire research manuscripts. That's a skill that a lot of graduate schools are looking for. Another thing that seniors can do if they're interested in graduate school is our students have to do either a thesis or an internship. I'll talk about internship a little later. Uh, but for our thesis option, they can do a one semester or two semester long thesis, basically where they design and conduct their own research project. Uh, this is a one on one uh, project that's done in conjunction with a faculty member. And you meet with the faculty member every week and basically the two of you create, design, conduct, and execute your own human subjects research project. So that's a really good experience for seniors to have. A lot of our students also present their research, whether in poster form or in oral presentations at different kinds of conferences. We have an academic showcase on the Franklin Pierce University campus uh, in April of every year where students present their research. This is one of our students presenting on the side here. And we also have other conferences that we take students to. Uh, we've been taking students to the New Hampshire Psychological Association Conference and the New England Psychological Association Conference, in addition to our academic showcase, and I have some pictures from that later. But if students are really involved with faculty research, sometimes faculty will take them to other national conferences or even international conferences in a particular area of study. As far as employment preparation goes, these are just some examples of courses that have a very applied focus that are designed to be used immediately after graduation. Techniques of counseling, one and two. Seminar on addiction is really useful for students that want to get into the addiction field. Creative arts therapy. There are a lot of courses that are useful for those wanting to go into social work and counseling, such as crisis intervention, child abuse and neglect, intimate violence. Um, Sports psychology is really big for a lot of our athletes on campus that really want to learn about the psychological aspects of athleticism and playing sports in general. Health psychology is very popular, uh, especially for those who come to Franklin Pierce as health science majors and want to minor in psychology. 
And psychopharmacology is a course that I teach that's all about how to use uh, drugs to treat mental illness. Another thing that is really helpful for students who want to graduate, graduate and go into the workforce immediately is getting an internship. We have students do internships uh, all throughout the area here, and students can also have the option of finding their own internship and doing it over the summer wherever they live. So if students don't live in the area, but they can find a summer job that's related to psychology and they can get paid for it and everything, then that's great. And we can all fill out the paperwork and, and get that internship account. Around here in the area, we've had students in different counseling centers. We've had students in with the guidance counselors in the Ringe Elementary School system. We have students in the Monadnock Center for Violence Prevention, which is our uh, local uh, program uh, and shelter for those who are fleeing domestic violence. And we have other places throughout the area that we can get students in as well if they want that kind of work experience. I have a student uh, intern right now that's doing an internship uh, in a child advocacy program in the court system. So students can really find intern work that's related to their specific uh, needs and what they want to do in the future. I also mentioned faculty research teams. We each have a team of researchers. Uh, this is me, <laughs> in case you're curious. Um, uh, this is an image we took at the New England Psychological Association Conference. It was a selfie. Uh, but our research teams in general, we have weekly research meetings. Uh, we are working on different research projects with our students and we assign them tasks to do. Some of the students are working on a volunteer basis and they can choose to devote however many hours they want to the project. Other students, like right now I receive some funding to pay two of my research assistants. So I have two research assistants that are kind of my coordinators. Uh, that really helped me a lot more with the different projects that I do and, and I pay them for the work that they do for me. Uh, so uh, each faculty member has different teams that are working on different research related to their particular field. These aren't all the courses we offer. I'm going to talk about a lot more throughout the presentation here. If your student wants to get involved, a Psychology Club is a great place to get involved. Students, uh, if you're looking to meet other psychology students or other people interested in mental health, this is a great place to go. I'm the faculty advisor of our psychology club. Our students meet every week and they do lots of different activities. Uh, they have biweekly topics usually. So a, a biweekly topic might be domestic violence or um, sleep disorders or addiction you know, anything like that. And what they'll do is for the first week, they'll do something academic related to that. They'll do presentations on it. They'll have guest speakers like me or someone else come in and teach you about really interesting studies or different topics that we think you should know about. Their sleep disorders one, I went in and I talked about a famous case in Canada that went all the way up to the Supreme Court where somebody committed murder while sleepwalking. Uh, and that's a really interesting study to dig your teeth into and consider all the things involved there, especially from a neuroscience perspective. That's one of the courses I teach. So, and then for the second week, they usually do something fun and social related to the topic. Like they might play, if you're familiar with Mafia, it's kind of a, a role-playing game um, where you have to, it's like Clue kind of, but role-playing where you have to figure out who the guilty party is. And, you know, they do other types of things, trivia, stuff like that. They also get into academic issues and charity issues as well. They do events for Suicide Awareness Week, you know, Domestic Violence Awareness Week. They did a supplies drive here for the Monadnock Center for Violence Prevention. This again is a place that provides shelter for those fleeing domestic violence. I went in around Halloween and I gave a talk <laughs> about what I think a zombie brain might look like. Cognitive function in zombies. You'll be wishing for some neurotransmission. Okay. They do career panels where we can provide information on different career options. Psychi is another place you can get involved. This is the Honor Society for Psychology Majors. Um, we have to invite you to join. There are different qualifications you need to meet. There are GPA requirements, different things like that to get involved. Uh, we have an induction ceremony every spring. And Psychi does things that are more academically oriented. Here you can see we had an advising night. We had a grad school panel where students 
come and get information about, you know, resumes, how to write a good personal statement, when you should be taking the GREs, how much it costs, what programs available, different things like that. <clears throat> These are just some pictures from different conferences we've attended with students uh, at the New Hampshire Psychological Association conference every year. They have what they call the Psych Cup competition, which is a competition between different universities about psychology knowledge. And they have buzzers to buzz in, and it's all very fun. Uh, this was our team that won back-to-back -back champions for the previous two years here. Uh, and you actually do get a cup that you get to keep for the entire year and bring back the following year. This is our professor, Jenny Brown, and this is me again with some of our students. I just have one student blocked off here because she graduated, and I'm not sure if I have her permission to use her image here, so I'm just being safe. <laughs> uh, this is a selfie that we took at the New England Psychological Association Conference, me and some students, and these are two of our students that won research prizes uh, at the New Hampshire Psychological Association Conference for their research. So our psychology minors, uh, we have four. Three are psychology specifically, and one is interdisciplinary. The general psychology minor, basically you take intro to psych, and then you can choose any psychology courses to fill out the rest of the required credits for the minor. So you re can really tailor it to your specific interests if you know there's something specific in the field that you want to get into. The experimental psychology minor has a focus on statistics and research. So you have to take statistics, research methods, and an upper level laboratory course. This is really useful for anyone planning on going into a doctoral program. Uh, that's going to require a lot of experience in human subjects research because we really have a focus on that in this minor. The forensic psychology minor focuses on victims of abuse and violence or in homeland security issues. So this can be a good minor for anyone majoring maybe in criminal justice or related fields. Anyone who wants to get into social work, counseling, again, working in the court system, child advocacy, uh, these can be uh, really interesting courses to take. That involves courses like psychology of terrorism and child abuse and neglect and theories of intimate violence, different kinds of courses like that that students find interesting. And there's the interdisciplinary minor that we are a part of, intelligence and security studies. Uh, this is a collaboration between several different departments on campus. Uh, and we have faculty teaching different courses that are related to intelligence gathering, uh, the economic, cultural, psychological, and political conditions that can give rise to national security risks. So these can be courses like psychology of intelligence analysis, case studies in espionage. There are lots of different options there, including some political science courses, some criminal justice courses that students can choose from for this minor. Just looking at the faculty a little bit, this is me, Dr. Brandi Klein. Uh, my PhD is in experimental psychology with a focus in cognitive neuroscience, and these are some of the courses that I teach. Uh, neuroscience, research methods, cognitive psych, psychopharmacology, uh, senior seminar in psychology. Uh, these are just some of the uh, options here. I do teach these courses very regularly, uh, and my research focuses on ethical issues in the pharmaceutical industry. Uh, and the stigma associated with seeking treatment for mental illness. Another faculty member is Dr. Leslie Buddington. She has her PhD in experimental psychology as well, but she focuses in social psychology. She teaches uh, a lot of the social psychology related courses, so social psych, uh, theories of personality, psychology of gender, intimate violence, psychology and the law, just a smattering of options there. Her research is in uh, social psychology as well, focusing on social issues and also uh, what causes feelings of disgust in people. Professor Flynn uh, has, again, his degree from Boston University, and he is a licensed psychologist. He has his own practice where he practices as a therapist, uh, and he also teaches at our university. So he teaches a lot of the uh, therapy-related courses counseling, abnormal psychology, that's all about the different mental illnesses, health psychology, crisis intervention, seminar on addiction. And he's also a big sports fan and he focuses on sports psychology as well. Dr. Jenny Brown uh, has her PhD. She grew up um, down in the Southwest and she actually used to work for the CIA. So she has a lot of experience in that field and she teaches a lot of our courses in the forensic psychology minor and in the intelligence and security studies minor 
in addition to her research focus, her field that she does a lot of her research in is evolutionary psychology. Uh, and she teaches courses like case studies in espionage, psychology of terrorism, psychology of intelligence analysis, and our statistics course. Dr. Craig Platt, uh, his focus is in developmental psychology, and he teaches a lot of our developmental courses and courses related to children. So child and adolescent development, uh, child abuse and neglect, adult development and aging, uh, these are his specialty areas. This is the president of our university, Dr. Kim Mooney. She doesn't teach in our department, but she is a psychologist by education. So we just like to uh, throw her in here as recognition. Her PhD is in social psychology. Uh, and we know she's very interested in that field as well and enjoys talking about it. So what do our graduates do? Uh, this is another image from a conference. This is Professor Brown and this is Professor Buddington and with some of our students. So 35% of our students use their degree immediately in psychology related work. So this could be different things like applied behavioral analysis, ABA specialist is becoming really big now, uh, TSS, therapeutic staff support. Um, these are the kinds of jobs where you work on behavioral issues in children or not children as well. Uh, TSS he can be assigned in a one-on-one -on -one type of setting to work with maybe an individual with autism or a different type of neurodevelopmental disorder. Uh, it can be psychiatric aids in hospitals and in inpatient facilities, in outpatient facilities, uh, group behavioral health homes maybe for children that have behavioral problems or substance abuse problems. Um, you can do addictions intakes at think places like rehab centers. Uh, you can be child advocates in the court system. There are many different things that our, our students get into. 20% of students immediately use their degree, but in a different field that's related to psychology, but not immediately psychology focused, such as things like human resources departments, higher education departments. So every university has different departments on campus for things like institutional research or residential life, where a lot of psych students like to use their degree in those ways. 30% go on to graduate school. We have students in masters of social work programs, mental health counseling programs, school psychology programs, clinical psychology programs, and industrial organizational programs. So our students go into graduate work in a wide variety of different areas. And 15% go into graduate school, but in a non-psych related field. So some students like to use their psych degree as uh, pre-law, or they wanna go into higher education administration. Those are some options there as well. And we our most famous alumna, Dr. Temple Grandin. She famously uh, is an individual with autism and she got her um, bachelor's degree here at Franklin Pierce and she went on to get her PhD in animal science and has invented a lot of uh, technologic technology that's used in animal science uh, and really useful and groundbreaking. And there was a TV series made about her starring Claire Danes, which you may have heard of. So that is the end of my presentation on the psychology program. I have contact information down here, email addresses for the faculty in our department. If you have any questions for us, feel free to send us an email. Uh, I hope you will consider Franklin Pierce in the psychology department, and we hope to see you soon.